this for me. Good morning. Good morning, my Facebook family. Good morning. Welcome to the Jehovah Meshach Teaching and Training Center. And this is Prophet Joanne Witherspoon. So I want to give you guys a few moments to maybe a few minutes, a few seconds just to come on if you're uh, if you if you caught me live to come on this morning with me. I want to continue talking about strengthening the prophets, God's servant, strengthening the prophet, God's servant. We began a discussion uh, some time ago and I was addressing the issue of talking about the prophets and understanding the prophetic, understanding that there are different dimensions of prophecy. And I just wanted to um, expound a little bit more on that this morning. So I invite you to come on in. Also, if you have not, um, just to let you know, I have written a book and it is entitled Strengthening the Prophet, God's Servant. And I'm going to be coming from this book. You'll also find that there'll be some information that I'll be sharing that may not be in this book, but you can have, you can find this book on Amazon.com, just to let you know. Um, in talking about strengthening the prophets, let's get a better understanding about who the prophet is or what the prophet does. I'm going to particularly address the prophet and what the prophet or what is a prophet. Uh, first and foremost, let me just start by saying this. When it comes to the prophet, the prophet should have, need have, the heart first of the father. It is not the heart of the, the, the people first. It is God's heart. The order should be for a true prophet or a prophet of the Lord is to have first the heart of the father. And then it should be their heart because they should be, they should be knit to God. And then by being able, uh, being knit to God, to hear from God, then they can talk to God's people. They can then tell God's people what he is saying. So coming from my book, I want to go first in 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. And I hope you have your Bibles because I'm going to be talking a little bit. I'm going to set this, this foundation uh, concerning uh, the office, the function of the prophet. And what a prophet does so that there is absolutely no confusion. Because I know there are a lot of things out there uh, as to what a prophet does, what a prophet can't do, and, and how uh, what they can do in the church and what they can't do in the church. And I just want to lay this foundation, okay? So coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28, it is very clear. And God hath set, S-E-T, some in the church... First, apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. God set. That word set is an office. There's an office for these, for, for these, uh, uh, those that are in the church. These are offices, apostles and prophets and teachers. These are offices, and that office denotes the work. It means a function. They function. We get up and we go to our job, and we have, when we go to our job, we have a title, or we have a particular office or function, and we're set in that thing to do a particular job. Well, God has taken that same care by way of the church. This is an apostolic governmental. This is the government of the body of Christ. And when you have one part missing, then it's not a full governmental function. Let me just tell you, because something is, meant, is missing. That's like having, that's like needing four legs on a table and you only got three. Well, what you think is going to happen to the table? It's not going to be able to withstand the weight of anything that you put on it. It's going to fall. And it's the same way it is with the government of the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists and pastor teachers. That's what it is. So let me go here. Let me talk a little bit first. Let me lay this. Let me say this. The office of Christ. Let's talk about the office of Christ first before we get into the, uh, the office uh, of the prophet. Jesus is the full manifestation of the five, uh, of all five of the headships. Some of you may say five. Some of you may say four. But it's the headship ministry callings. And this is outlined in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. And I will go here. Ephesians 4 and 11. 
And he gave, Christ did, he gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Christ did this. See, the word says when you go back uh, uh, up in, when you go back a little further up in verse uh, 9, oh, excuse me, um, Verse 7, unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. People, we are the gifts to the body of Christ. And this is a, this, these gifts are perpetual. They, don't, they didn't die off. God left them here in the earth. And he left them so that we could continue the work. The work that he finished on the cross. That's what he did. And he gave these gifts unto me and he gave it unto the church. And it is for what? Verse 12 says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13, till we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statute of of the fullness of Christ. He gave us that. And it, it is clear. Until we come into the unity. So that has not. Uh, those gifts. Or these functions. This, this office. These offices. Have not died off. They are still. They are alive. And they are working. They are functioning. So having said that, I want to talk to you about Jesus, Jesus the Apostle. We've just mentioned Jesus, talking about him and being the full headship. Jesus is the Apostle. That is clear in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the Apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, the prophet. Woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. This is in John chapter 4, verses 19 and 29. And this is the woman, the Samaritan woman. And she runs off and, and see, now she's drinking of the water that Jesus gives her. Because he tells her, of this water I give you, you'll never thirst again. And she runs off and she said, come and see a man which told me all things that ever I did. She, look, Jesus read her mail. Y'all need to see this. He read her mail. He came to her address because he could tell her who she was and what she was doing. And she said, is this not the Christ? Jesus the evangelist. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases among the people. This is in Matthew chapter 4. And verse 23, Jesus, the pastor, I am in John chapter 10 and verse 14. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And then we see him as the teacher in John chapter three and verse two. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, and for you all that know, Rabbi means teacher. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. So, Jesus is the Alpha, he's the Omega. He's the first and he's the last of every one of these offices. And he has a right, Jesus has a right to designate and to delegate. Hear this, designate and delegate the seats of authority. These are not just gifts, people. These are seats of spiritual authority to whomever he pleases. He gives them as gifts to mankind. I just read it in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8. Another way to say is that the office of the prophet is an extension, a gift extension of Jesus Christ himself as the prophet. He is also able to point and anoint headships for, of ministries according, accordingly Excuse me, as the chief cornerstone. So, Ephesians 2 and 20. Let's go here. Let's talk about the prophets. Ephesians 2 and verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. 
Let's talk about the office of the prophet. Let's talk about the function of the prophet. Okay? Let's address what a prophet is. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about what a prophet does and does not do. Let's set that tone. The prophet is neither a philosopher nor a systematic theologian, but a prophet is a covenant mediator who delivers the word of God to his people in order to shape their future by reforming their present. I hope you got that. Prophets also are sent ones. Okay? They're sent ones. Jeremiah 1 and, 5, uh, 1 and 5. Before I formed thee, before, excuse me, I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. God did this. I sanctified thee, the sent one. And I have ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. He's already set you. In Jeremiah 1 and 7, but the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go, and all that I, I send, and I shall send thee. You shall go to the place where I send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. We are mouthpieces of God. We're not mouthpieces for man. We need to get that right. We're not. In Isaiah 61 and 1, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to do what? To preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And Jesus stood up in the temple and you can see this cited in, four, in Luke chapter 4 and 18. And he says the same thing. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He is God already in the flesh. But he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he sent me. He has anointed me and then he sent me. And he sent him to do a task. What was it? What's the task? To heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance unto the captives, and the recovery of the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. The office of the prophet. It receives, the prophet receives the attributes of Christ that endow him with the ability to speak what is in the heart of, the, of God into the hearts of the people. And I'm going to tell y'all prophets, let me tell you, and anybody else, you may not be a prophet, but let me tell you so you can, I, this will help, you better understand the nature of a prophet. They're going to they're gonna often say some, uh, say some things that may not be pleasing to your ears. We're not sent to be men pleasers. We're not sent to tickle your ears and to make you feel good. We are sent to be mouthpieces or to say what God says. And we're faced with opposition. Because we're never want to told that we're we're never we don't want to receive correction we don't want to receive the word from God because what the way of a man is right in his own eyes we shut our ears as a matter of fact we even get to the point where we're not even willing to hear what God says because we're okay with the way we are and the way things are going it's the status quo we don't want to make any. We don't want to make any waves. Don't make no waves. Don't come in and cause change in my life when we're to be conformed and, to, conformed and transformed into the image of God. Okay? Prophets also proclaim the future counsels and purposes of God. And then they know the secret things of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29, it says this. The secret things belong unto, our, uh, belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. That we may do all the words of this law. So God has taken time to speak. He takes time to speak through his prophets. To reveal to us his heart. To let us know what it is that he wants us to do. He doesn't call us, he, he, he doesn't, with the children of Israel, he made the provision by way of the prophet so that when we come into the land that he gives us, that we don't learn to do after the abominations of the nations. He calls us to a place of holiness and sanctification, people, and he uses the prophets to help us get there. Okay? 
Now, the word of the prophet necessitates being influenced by and specifically expressed in the language of the Bible. Furthermore, to fulfill these requirements, there must be with the prophet a character development or the character development. And the prophet must walk out the instructions, the mandate, and the discipline of the Lord. Now, for a prophet, this process takes years. Let me help you. It takes years of training. It just doesn't happen. We don't get called a prophet uh, and think you go get your card printed up and call yourself a prophet or you walk in talking about I'm a prophet and I prophesy. You go through something. Prophecy is the way to speak, is a way for God to speak to his people, guiding the, his people uh, from their current situations into the hope and the future that he has for them. That's what the prophet does. Okay? I understand this, that the prophet also, or the, the, the office of the prophet is not the gift of prophecy. I said it before in the previous recording that just because you prophesy does not make you a prophet. And I just uh, supported that from Jeremiah 1 and 5. Prophets, as a prophet, your position is with the apostles. Oh my God, let me help you. As a prophet, your position is with the apostles and you are considered the cornerstone apostolic foundation upon which the church is built. I read it in Ephesians 2 and 20. And I built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Standing in that governmental position. It is a position. It is a position where we are, uh, we are influential. We can influence. Uh, we have a sphere of influence. We have a realm. And in this realm, how are you influencing the people? How are you guiding them back to God? How are you listening to hear from the Lord as to the direction maybe one should take or the body of Christ or the church should take? With this process, with, 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 being, with going through this process of being made or, or growing up, God deals with you. He deals with you greatly. He deals with your character greatly. Because guess what? You represent him. You are representing the kingdom of God. You are representing the king. Let me tell you. You are representing the king and the kingdom of God. You are an ambassador. And as such, your responsibility is to speak what he tells you to speak. And to do what he tells you to to do your responsibility as a prophet the office of the prophet is a governmental role of authority the, the church is the governing body hear this in case y'all forgot and in case some of you all don't know let's talk about the prophet the prophet uh, excuse me the church is the governing body of the kingdom of god and it possesses these administrative offices and the prophet helps to bring things in order the office or excuse the office of the prophet flows in the area let me help you yes uh, edification, exhortation, and comfort. But a prophet and the prophet's spiritual authority uh, flows in the area of guidance. It flows in the area of instruction, in the area of rebuke, judgment, and revelation as needed. And whatever Christ chooses to speak for the purifying and the perfection of the church. So, no, it's not going to always sound good. Okay, let's talk about what prophets are. They're preachers, they're teachers, they're reformers. That's who they are. Prophets are under the authority of the one who sent them. I just said that. And they are responsible to the one who sends them. We place, we put too much emphasis and stock on this person sent me. Well, I'm, and let's stop. Who sent you? And you better make sure you're sent and that you didn't go on your own. Okay? In Jeremiah 1 and 7, but the Lord said unto me, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. 
in Moses, in excuse me, in Exodus four and twelve, he even tells Moses, "Now therefore go, and I will be thy mouth, and I will teach thee what thou shalt say." Well, there's no difference between Moses and you or I. He says, "Go, and I will be in your mouth, and I will teach thee what thou shalt say." But one thing is for sure: what comes out of your mouth is based on or is from the Word. Going back to it comes from the word it is the language is of the bible it is not your feelings this is why it's important that we not prophesy out of the imaginations of our heart because see we can see things and we can hear things and then we want to address it well you got to know that it's god speaking through you before you open your mouth What is a prophet? Prophets were sometimes called, uh, uh, prophets are sometimes called seers. In 1 Chronicles 9 and 22, I'll go here. Um, I'll read that a little bit. 1 Chronicles chapter 9. My fingers don't want to let me move this morning. <laughs> oh Jesus talking about these prophets being set in their offices um, Zechariah verse 21 Zechariah the son of Michelle Zemiah was porter of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation meaning he was a doorkeeper a gatekeeper excuse me not a doorkeeper a gatekeeper the gatekeepers had the ability to see and and to and to cry out if an enemy approached they had the ability to see okay so in chronicles 9 and 22 all these which were chosen to be porters in the gates were 212 these were reckoned by their genealogy in their villages from david and samuel get this the seer did ordain in their set set office in their set office in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 9. This is coming from the King James Version too. So if you guys got another version you'd like to read to get a better understanding, that's great by me. This is 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 9. So that you know. A lot of people think because they see is they prophets. God didn't call you to be no prophet, you, you're not a seer. Not that you can't discern, but get this, because this is what the word has to say about that. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come, and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. I hope I'm helping somebody this morning. A seer. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 18, Saul goes to see, he, he draws near in, in 9 and verse 18, excuse me. Saul drew near to Samuel, again, the seer in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. He was talking about the prophet. Everybody know, anybody that's read the Bible know that Samuel was a prophet. And he was called a seer. And in verse 19, and Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for you shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let you go, and will tell thee, get this, all that is in thine heart. And only God could reveal to Samuel what was in the heart of Saul. What is a prophet? A prophet is also a watchman. <laughs> a watchman looks out, they view, they uh, 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 they declare future events. We know this in 1 Corinthians 12 concerning the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, particularly the word of knowledge, because the word of knowledge can do just this. It can tell you about future events. The word of wisdom will give you instructions. So prophets or watchmen, they can declare future events as being divinely revealed to them by visions or through visions. In Jeremiah 6 and 17, 
The Lord said, also I said, watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. We're sent to warn, if we're sent to warn you, we give you a warning. That's the trumpet. The trumpet is the warning. We're sounding the alarm. But for some of us, we just rather walk right on. You know, we'd rather ignore the, the sound of the trumpet or the warning. And we just keep going. And then we wonder why, or you then may wonder why, Things are like uh, things are not turning out like maybe you expected or hoped them to, and it's because you didn't heed the warning when the prophet spoke to you. And I understand now why people, you know, people are afraid to even come around real prophets. They have the ability to deceive because guess what? Men sins, men like men, men, men like like to dwell. Excuse me, in darkness, and where darkness is, there's sin, and they don't want to be exposed. They don't want to bring that 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 darkness to the light. Men's deeds are evil. You, they're evil. They're, they're wicked. They can be wicked and evil. So with that, when you got a seer and can speak to that, they would rather not come around you because they're scared that they're going to be exposed. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Now, there's a whole lot of information that I can I would gladly be able to give you um, going, you know, going forward today. I just wanted to be able to share this little time with you to just talk about the prophet, the office of the prophet, what a prophet is. And hopefully you have a better understanding about God's servant. Whether you're a prophet or whether you 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 feel you know you may be operating again in the gift of prophecy and maybe it leads to prophet to being a prophet, I have no idea. I will talk further about the dimensions of prophecy as we go on. And I just encourage you to kind of hang in there with me as we go on this journey. Um so it is my it is uh if you've enjoyed this this video, this live then I please, please, please like it and share it. Please like it and share it. Maybe there was something in there that that um, spoke to you and you want to share it with someone else. Please like it and share it. Also, um, I want to announce that coming August, uh, excuse me, next month, July, excuse me. I want to say, um, give me one, give me just a moment. On July 10th, I'm, I have partnered, excuse me, the Jehovah Meshach Teaching and Training Center has partnered with the Kingdom Advancement Center and the Kingdom Institute Global School. And starting next month, July 10th, they, uh, classes will begin. If you are at all interested in taking classes such as prophecy, such as deliverance or Kingdom Foundations, or if you just want to... Ex, uh, uh, expand because we're this is the year of exponential leadership and if you're interested in expanding your uh, Christian education there are anointed teachers I tell you there are anointed teachers available to teach you there is a host a plethora of classes that you can enroll in so all you have to do is just go to the kingdomac.com and uh, you can go on uh, into their portal and you can register for the classes. We got classes starting again in July as well as in August. And um, just go from there. And of course, there's a way that you, you can uh, speak to someone if you need further assistance. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for spending this little time with me this morning and talking about the prophet strengthening God's servant, the prophet, and understanding the prophet and the prophet's role in the body of Christ. Um, it is always my prayer that you be blessed and shalom. Peace be unto you.